I'm frustrated. More people should watch this show. Why is everyone not talking about this? Sh I'm I'm upset. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. As I do every single weekend, I'm reviewing the brand new show or movie on Netflix, whatever streaming platform basically we're talking about. And this weekend, it is... Oh, the much-anticipated Season 3 of The Dragon Prince. I'm going to give you guys my spoiler-free review because it just came out. If you want a spoiler talk, let me know in the comment section. And, of course, were you excited for this season? All of those things. Have a discussion down there. Oh, my goodness, let's talk about this. So, as Callum and Rayla cross into the magical realm of Zadia, Ezrin returns as king and faces pressure from all sides. Like I said, we've had two seasons of The Dragon Prince to uh, fall in love with these characters in the same way that we did for the characters in Avatar The Last Airbender. And I say that just in case you're unfamiliar with this show and you're watching this review and this is the first time you've ever seen anything to do with The Dragon Prince. It's the same creators. And you can tell, even down to the way that they go about the episodes from different books and just the establishment of these characters in the first place, how they have grown, how they go off on their side adventures. But of course, they're going to meet up in the end and season three takes that formula and does it the way that we're anticipating it. Um, but this may be my favorite season overall. And here's why. It takes the stakes... It takes the buildup of the characters from the first two seasons. It establishes those at the beginning of this season. It allows us to uh, get back on board with these characters because it's not been too long, but it has been long enough to where we're like, okay, we need to know we're here. Here's our characters on their adventures. And it raises those stakes. And it brings in the epic nature that we were hoping for once we finally encounter these grand scale, massive dragons. I mean, my goodness. But it all becomes so epic after a while, and every single character on their separate adventure you care about. What other shows on TV or on streaming platforms can you say that for? Because, you know, every show that I love, or really every show that I enjoy watching, there's always a storyline or a subplot that doesn't feel like it measures up to the rest. But with this show, I can't really find a weak link in terms of side quests and subplots and stories that we don't care as much about. Now, obviously, I have my favorite, and I'll talk about that here in just a second, but every character arc is just magnificent. And every character that we care about from the first few seasons, and even new characters, they get their moments to shine here. From Callum and Rayla's storyline, to Ezrin, to Viren, to Claudia, to, to Sorin... Everyone gets their moment here, and it's great. And even if they're not fleshed out as much as, say, a Callum and Rayla storyline, because they're kind of the focus of the season, or at least the beginning of the season, on their quest with their tiny, cute little dragon that makes the puppy noises. I'm just sitting back on, oh, that's really cute. But they're really the focus of the season. But even if the characters aren't the focus, they still get a line or a moment that's fantastic. And you're dealing with very drastic uh, stakes. Here, the stakes are raised to a ridiculous level. And don't worry if you don't like the fact that the characters are separated at the beginning of the season. There are some storylines that converge, and of course some of our characters come together. Not necessarily a spoiler, just something that happens in most shows in this vein. Uh, and then you have the battles that take place more towards the back half of the season. But these battles are so grand scale compared to what we've gotten so far. And they look just incredible. The animation, it's so vibrant and colorful. And it did take me an episode or two back in season one to get used to this style because I'm like, ah, oh, they're doing the 3D thing and they're mixing in 2D elements. But once you get used to it, uh, it becomes gorgeous and beautiful. And the character design is another thing. And we get introduced to more creatures throughout this particular season. And of course, the dragons who play a bigger role than they have ever played. Massive epic, like I said, grand scale dragons and down to the voices and they're just so menacing and you're just um, you're worried about our characters and situations. There's a moment, there's an episode where two of our characters have to get past a dragon. At first they try to sneak. That doesn't work. Then they have to have a conversation. Maybe that works, maybe it doesn't. And then they're avoiding giant flames and you're just so worried and it is a show that you know you feel like it's ah, it's for it's for the younglings it's not for adults and then you start watching and these characters experience loss and death and there's a there's a few romances one main romance but a few romances throughout this season that that's budding and it really is a show 
for everyone, for families. It's the same thing that I said for Avatar The Last Airbender, one of my favorite shows, not just animated shows, shows of all time. And the Dragon Prince is getting there, man. I mean, I, I didn't realize how much I loved this show until I sat down and binged through this entire season, my favorite season thus far, and how much I cared about the characters. Because when you get to those moments, those emotional moments that break you and tear you apart, even when someone's just going to prison for something that they didn't do, you're, you're worried because you care. And you're dealing with very adult themes, like I said, but you're also dealing with, you know, young children who are supposed to be leading this nation of people. And the child seems to be the most responsible out of all of them because he's the one that is choosing peace over war, whereas everyone else, they just want to fight. Uh, now, maybe there's, a, there's another force coming in that's playing a little bit and uh, forcing one's hand, maybe making up somebody's mind for them, and we get into that storyline, which is <laughs> extremely interesting. But it's so funny how certain characters that maybe you don't expect to be the wisest end up being the wisest. Now, are there childish moments in this show? For sure. A few times throughout the season, there's humor that is aimed directly for children. In episode two, I believe it was, it was the fart flower. And it's just like, all right, they're doing the fart thing. It was I like giggling. Of course I was giggling because I like these characters. But there are some times when you're just like, maybe you could scale back on that and, and focus more on the adult aspects. But that's in every show like this. You just have to ignore that as an adult who's watching The Dragon Prince and absolutely loving every second of it. Then we get our look into Ervos and, and the design of, of the new elves this season, the new characters we're introduced to who get some incredible moments of their own, and we pay more attention to the world building, and I think this show is starting to pay more attention to that as well. It's expanding because our characters are going on their separate journeys, um, but we're introduced to new characters and new situations that consistently kind of take your breath away, even though this is an animated show. It all looks so grand and I say grand, especially when we get into that final episode, which I believe is literally called the final battle or the battle or something like that. And it all picks right up, man. When you start this season off, you had the cliffhanger from the end of season two. You start off, you're, you're solving issues over here, getting reintroduced to these humans and these creatures. And one thing I loved about this season two is you figure out, maybe not permanently, but for the most part, what side everyone's on because it's been kind of up and down throughout the first two seasons and now you're like okay this character is on this side these characters are on this side we have new characters that come in you don't really know whose side they're on but the ones we've been presented with thus far you know now who they're fighting for and I really like that as well but like I keep saying Rayla and Callum that's the storyline that I'm interested in the most because that's the one that I am most invested in it's going to be different for everyone and I, I just love the fact and I said it in my review for last season I'll say it again that they got Jack Decina back and you know he was a big part of the Avatar franchise and I just I love his voice as a, a leader someone who's turning into a leader someone who is a bit helpless at times but he slowly comes into his own he, he nails that I mean he's just perfect for that character and then his and Rayla's bond as friends, you know, as people who clearly love and care for each other, that grows, as does so many stories. I could go on and on about this all day, I don't want to get into spoilers, but man, The Dragon Prince Season 3, if you're not watching this show, if you're brand new to this thing, please go check it out. If you don't love Season 1, maybe if you're not the biggest fan of Season 2, why wouldn't you be? Uh, but I definitely think Season 3 will be a lot of people's favorites. It's my favorite. And man, it really uh, caps off an arc, but sets us off on a new adventure that I'm super excited for. Before I give you my score, if you enjoyed this review and you like these streaming reviews every single weekend, hit that thumbs up button, helps out this video and this channel. Back to the score, let's go 90%. <laughs> a 9 out of 10 for The Dragon Prince Season 3. Uh, so, so good. Loving everything about this show so far. One of the most underrated animated shows I've ever seen. I mean, that's it. I, more people need to be talking about this. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Knives Out Review should be the next one on my channel. A lot of things dropping this week, and I don't know when I'm posting this. Who knows? But the Dragon Prince is awesome. Everyone should know that. You guys are truly the best. I'll be doing some more things very soon. Actually, guys, one more thing. So there was a YouTuber the other day, Starkiller. 2187 I really like that name, uh, that did a YouTube channel review about my channel, 
Austin Burke. And I was just really impressed with the fact that he did that. This is something he likes to do on his channel. So if you guys want to go over there and support that. He said he would continue to do more. He has some other reviews on his channel as well. So shout out to Starkiller2187. Thank you for the awesome review, man. Watch the entire video. Great job. Okay, that's it. That's all for me.